Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Bearded Dev and this is Sequel for Beginners Part 3. Today what we're going to be looking at is the WHERE clause and what is NULL. So as we've already covered in the previous episodes, if you haven't checked out Part 1 and Part 2, be sure to go back and check them out before watching this video. We've learned how to connect to a database and how to write a basic select statement. So we're just going to open up our database, the bookshop, we're going to click on new query. Uh, now this is quite a small database, I've only got two tables in here at the moment, books and customers. So what we're going to do is start off where we picked up last time, we're going to write select all from books. Okay, brilliant, so we've brought our data up now. now this is a, a database of a bookshop um, and what we're going to do is imagine a scenario here so we're in the bookshop uh, we work there a customer comes up to us they want to find out how many of a certain book we've got in stock which is where the where clause comes in so when we're selecting all from a table that is going to return us all the data in a table um, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner this table's only got nine rows and it's only got seven columns so it's quite a small table. When we're working with databases in the real world they tend to have a lot more columns and also a lot more rows. Um, I've come across databases where the rows uh, exceeds, exceeds a million. Obviously we don't want to go searching through a million rows to find the one piece of information we need. So what we're going to do is filter this data, the results it returns according to a predicate. Now how we do that is with the WHERE clause. Uh, so we've got here select all from books where PID that's the ID of the book, um, that's a unique identifier, equals 1. Now if we run that query, what it's going to do, it's going to look at the books table, where the ID is 1, and we've got select all columns on at the moment. So if I run this query now, we are going to return the one book with the PID of 1. Now obviously we filtered that by PID, uh, that's primary key and it's a unique number. Uh, we're going to be going through those in a separate episode. But going back to our scenario where a customer comes up to us and asks us if we've got a certain book in stock, we probably won't know that ID. Imagine if we're a store that stocks uh, thousands of books we're not going to know the unique ID for each book so we want to be able to search by different things, things that we do know um, so title, author, um, we could even check uh, I don't know, in a different scenario uh, we could check what's the most amount of books we've got in stock um, so if we've got more than say 10 books in stock we want to put those on sale so we're going to run our select all again at the moment. Remember I mentioned earlier that in your query window, even though we've got the WHERE clause here, we can just highlight this select all from books. When we click execute, it's going to ignore that WHERE clause. If I'd have just left it unhighlighted, uh, it would have executed the whole thing. Um, so we're just executing effectively the top line here. Um, so let's do something more beneficial to our scenario so let's look on title uh, and we'll say this customer's come up to us and they want to know how many copies of Lord of the Flies we've got in stock um, so we're going to look at the books table now we need to filter by where, uh, where the title is Lord of the Flies using our where clause so our column name is P underscore title now what we're going to do here is because the column type, the data type in that column uh, is actually text or rather more specific a character string, we need to highlight to SQL that we're actually searching for a character string uh, and how we do that is we enter 
apostrophe. So click on uh, an apostrophe and then we're going to type in Lord, if I can spell it correctly, Lord of the Flies. And we're also going to close that to indicate that our character string is closed. You can see if we hadn't closed that, uh, we've got an IntelliSense here, error here. Um, where it's underlined with a red squiggly line so we know we need to close that so if we run that now uh, what this query is saying is we're going to look at the table books uh, we're going to look at only where the P title is Lord of the Flies and we're going to return all columns for that that table so if we execute that now uh, and we can see we've returned the correct result just picking up on something quickly here, um, how I knew this column was um, a character string. Um, if we look at what we did in a previous lesson where we open up the table books, um, we open up columns, we can see there are data types next to each column. So there's the name of the column, the data type, and whether it allows nulls or not, which we're going to move on to shortly. Uh, I am going to do a separate video on data types because it, it does need a lot of coverage. Uh, but we can see there PID int, so it's just a number, int stands for integer. Uh, P title is a varchar, so that means character string, but it's of if it's a variable length. Again, don't worry about that too much. But if you see anything with the word char in then it is going to be a character string. You can see we've got a different data type down here, tiny int, um, and that's because there's only a small amount of integers we're going to have. Uh, we're not going to have, say, 10 million books in stock unless someone's made a complete and um, utter error with the ordering. So let's go back to our query. Again, I'm just going to run the top line, select all from books, so I want to return everything from this table. Um, let's imagine another scenario. A uh, customer comes up to us and they want to know what books we've got in stock that were published after the millennium. Um, so what we can do, uh, we don't need to, well we need to filter by P year now. So that's the particular column we're going to be looking at. Um, now this isn't, this is actually a, a character string. Um, because we don't just have a format where we can store the year so I could have stored the I could have stored it as a date um, so like the 1st of January and the year um, but just decided I was quickly throwing this data together for this video so I'm going to store it as a character string okay so I'm going to enter that the year 2000 now as it's a character string uh, it's just going to go in order of numbers so it'll look for any number that's greater than that so if I run that query now I've put equal to we don't have any books in the year 2000 what we want to do here uh, we're not looking for anything that's equal to we're looking for the greater than so we insert our greater than symbol so we're looking for the column P year greater than 2000 so if we run that query now that's what we're looking for. If we want to look at books before the year 2000, we can change that to a less than symbol and just execute that query. And that will return the same thing. Um, so working on with the greater than and less than symbols, so you can have a, a column where column equals greater than, less than, not equal to. So let's do another scenario a customer wants to know all the hardback books we've got in stock uh, I'll leave that query at the top and I'll write this as another query so we're going to do select all from books where P type that indicates whether it's a hardback or a paperback in that column um, I can't remember what I said what we was going to run the query for but we'll go with hardback so the same query, so we've got where P type equals hardback, I could type that, or I could look at where P type is not equal to paperback. We only have two types, hardback or paperback, um, so that query would be exactly the same, 
in fact I will type it out the other way around and we can see those results and how that works obviously say if I had an, another version maybe uh, electronic ebook um, then equals to hardback and not equal to payback paperback wouldn't return the same results if I ran that query as not equal to paperback it would return the types of books that are hardback uh, and also ebooks as well um, so if I run this as hardback so if we run those two together uh, we should see exactly the same set of results another scenario we could have is we want to find out how many uh, books we've got in stock that are greater than five uh, obviously we've got a lot of stock uh, and we want to get rid of that so maybe we want to reduce those books um, so again we're going to write select all from books where p stock now this is uh, an integer column it's a tiny int uh, which means it can only go up to the maximum number of 255 so when I was designing this I'd, I doubted we'd ever have more than that in stock uh, we're only a small bookshop so we want to find out all the books where we've got stock greater than 5 now as this is an integer we don't need to indicate to SQL with the apostrophes that it's a character string so if we execute this query now we can see we've got four books here and we've got the tiger who came to tea we've got eight uh, the man who stuck his, his wife for a hat sounds a very exciting book uh, has got nine uh, and we've got two other books that are greater than five as well um, we could also turn it the other way around so maybe we want to find books that we've only got one in stock um, so we could change this to equals one I don't think we have at the moment oh actually we've got one Lord of the Flies so if that customer who came in earlier who asked us if we've got it in stock has bought it um, once they killed that into the, tea, the till uh, that stock would update as zero um, obviously this query though wouldn't return it because we're looking at stock equals one so we could have a look at zero instead I don't think we've got any books out of stock at the moment because we've got a very efficient ordering system now we're going to move on to working with nulls uh, if you've worked with databases or ever looked at a database before you may have come across the word null uh, now in this books table uh, I don't think I have any columns in here with the word null um, but I do have another table um, I'm just going to open up a new query window and um, we're going to go select all from DBO customers so this this table stores all our customer data uh, and as we can see here in the middle name column we've got some nulls and the customer's second line of address we've also got some nulls so the question is what is null now let's just run a query here so if we go select all from DBO customers uh, we'll put in the where C middle name now we know we've got some customers who and we can we know nulls a word so it's a character string so we'll open that type in the word null and clicks execute huh. so we've got three customers there where the word null is in that column but when we search for it it's not bringing anything back and the reason is that null isn't actually anything so null is just a representation of nothing it means that they may be in this case uh, I'll just run this top query again uh, they maybe don't have a middle name so we could have put a blank in there or we can just use the word null to represent unknown so they may have a middle name but we don't know it so in terms of the logic for a where clause uh, you might come across three predicate logic and what that means is when you enter the where clause it evaluates all the data and that can either come back as true false or unknown 
So when we search for, say, let's we've got this end column here, customer's date of birth. Maybe we have a new customer on who doesn't want to give us their date of birth, so we put null there as a placeholder. That then becomes unknown. It's not null the word null, it's just that we don't know what it is. Now, how we find out if something's null is not in, t in a character string. So a null is a recognized word in SQL. So we've got our query here, we're looking at the customer's table. We want to find out where the middle name is null. So we don't use equals or any mathematical symbols here. Uh, we just enter is null. Now, this will run our, if we run this query now, we can see we've got the three customers. Let's just change this to, in fact, I'll write it again. So we'll do select all from customers. Again, don't worry about the DBO at this moment. Where C second line is null. Now looking at the data that we've got in front of us, we can see that two customers their unknown second line of address whereas our, we do have a customer who has got a second line of address so if we run this query again I'm just highlighting this particular query so we're not going to execute the query at the top of the page uh, we only return two customers um, so that shows us there are two customers out of the three that we've got at the moment uh, we've only just recently opened the bookshop <laughs> um, that we don't know what their second line of address is. It may exist, it may not exist, but the database doesn't know whether that information exists or not. So it, we have null as a placeholder for unknown, we don't know. Now, if I wanna search for, let's say, where the column isn't null. So we change this query to, in fact, I'll write it again below. So select all from customers, where C second line is not null. So this query will return all customers where the second line isn't null. And there we go. Guys, as I've mentioned before, uh, if you want to install SQL Server on your local machine, I believe you can download a trial from the Microsoft website. Um, if you can get your hands on a copy at work, maybe to connect to some, some test databases or some sample databases, that would be a great help in actually working with it. Um, in learning anything anything in the world really you you always need the hands-on experience um, as I mentioned previously as well the adventure works database can be downloaded online just make sure you're downloading it from a reliable source it's generally the database that comes with all all Microsoft training material as well as so just as a recap then guys what we've covered today is the where clause uh, you'll see us working with that in a lot more videos coming up uh, and what is null? Um, null is a thing I've seen beginners with SQL get wrong, so it's really important to understand what null represents, and it is not actually the word null. Um, if you like my videos, please do click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below. You can comment on anything, send me samples of code that you've done, issues you're having, or what kind of videos you'd like me to do in the future. Thanks for watching.